Hi guys and welcome to another week's news with Robbie. Hi guys, I hope you are all staying safe and staying well. Today we have Jermaine Jackman, the voice winner 2014, with us. The special thing about Jermaine is that not only is he a great singer, he is also a great voice of the people. Thank you for your time, JJ. Is it okay if I call you JJ, though? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. I was three years old when you won The Voice with Will I Am as your coach. Were you, uh, were you always confident or were you aware that you were going to win The Voice? I was not always confident. Um, and I was not aware that I would win The Voice. Um, I just loved singing and I loved being on stage and I loved sharing my talent with people. So okay. uh, I applied for The Voice because the way they advertised it was if you can sing, you can get in. And because I love singing, I thought, well, why not apply and see if I can get in? Um, and yeah, the rest is history, really. Okay. What have you been doing since your win and is there anything you will do differently? Well, I have been releasing music, I've been recording and writing since winning The Voice, but also The Voice provided me with a platform to talk about the issues and the concerns that not only face me, but face so many different communities around the country. So I use that same platform to talk on those issues, to talk on those concerns, to be a voice for those who feel voiceless, to empower people, to inspire people, and to be a role model. Um, and that's why I've become so political, but I've always been political, I guess. But that's why I've been so uh, more outspoken than, than most, because it provided me with a platform to, 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 for people to hear uh, my opinions and the voices and the issues that face so many people. Okay, Jermaine. The murder of George Floyd has brought out all sorts of emotions in all of us. Can you tell us what you think and how you are helping to raise the profile of Black Lives Matter? That's such an important question, Robbie. And the murder of George Floyd was, was really shocking and saddening. Um, Likewise with the, the murder of Breonna Taylor and so many other um, African Americans in America. But also it reflects the state violence and police brutality faced by black British people and by black people around the world. And I think it's a collective effort to try and fight racism, to try and fight white supremacy and trying to dismantle the institutional and structural race and racism and the barriers that it creates for a lot of people. So I've been hosting a lot of spaces where we can have those type of conversations, um, talking about police brutality and state violence and where does it come from and, and why does it rear its head? Um, and also talking about racism in schools and in education and in the workplace and the employment um, and just thinking about ways in which we can tackle that. Last weekend, actually, I hosted the Young Black Leader Summit, which brought young black leaders from around the country together um, to discuss what are those solutions uh, that we can try and think about and implement to tackle structural systematic racism. Um, and that was an amazing three to four hour summit um, with uh, an amazing attendee list. And we had some amazing speakers Lord Woolley, who's in the House of Lords, and he is the director of Operation Black Vault. We had the first black bishop um, in this country. Her name is Bishop Rose. Uh, we also had Kanye King, who is the founder of Mobiles, and she actually put me forward for The Voice, but we'll talk about that story in a bit. Uh, and uh, we also had Viva Han, who, is, uh, who leads on a, an amazing organization called Black Sox. So it was a phenomenal uh, summit. And those are just some of the ways in which that we can try and tackle that by having those conversations, but also how, thinking about what can we do in our day-to-day -day lives to tackle racism? Um, and thinking about what can you do, Robbie, as well, when you 
after this interview and when you go back to school, what can you do when you hear racist things? What can you do when you see something like that? And I think, well, actually, let me ask you that question. If you saw someone um, being racist in school, what would you do? I would probably say racism isn't nice. Imagine if somebody was being racist to you. Mm-hmm. How would you feel and how would, what would you do? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's making sure that you, you speak up and speak out and you hold them to account and you make sure they don't do that again. I think it's very um, important that you also tell the teacher that someone is being racist, someone said very unkind and racist things and making sure that it's dealt with because nobody is born racist. They learn how to be racist. That means you can unlearn how to be racist. Um, and they probably got that from their relatives and their family. That's why they shared their views in school. But no, that's amazing. Great to hear that. Okay. I hope this time love, kindness and respect will, pre- will prevail. It will. It will. Mm, hopefully it does. Yes. Finally, do you think Will I Am is coping with the lockdown? And do you think I can interview him? I think Will I Am is, is coping with the lockdown very well. Uh, he He's probably in his studio recording and writing. He's probably produced about maybe 20, 100 songs, 20,000 songs already uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, because that's the type of person that he is. He's such a creative and he will just put himself in, in, a, in isolation. That's, that's what us creatives tend to do anyway. We lock ourselves off from the world and we just work and work and work. And when the world actually needs us to, to lock away, I think that's exactly what he's doing. He's just working and working and working. And it's been a phenomenal journey for him and seeing his, his growth on The Voice alongside my own. And uh, I remember when he turned for me uh, uh, on The Voice and how it just lit up my face because the journey that I had been through to get to that point, even just the, just the auditions, the journey that I had been to to get to the auditions was, was, was filled with trials and tribulations. And I'm glad that I was able to develop myself and grow um, during that period to be able to get onto The Voice. Kanye King, who I mentioned earlier, the founder of the Mobile Awards, she actually put me forward for The Voice and, I'm, um, and I was able to, uh, to get into the show and audition uh, in front of the producers because what you don't see on TV is that um, there are around some rounds of producers that you have to go through first in order for you to get onto TV. So the producers need to make sure that you, you actually can sing and that you fit the bill and then you can get onto the TV. And I had gotten past that round thanks to Kanye King and I got to, uh, to, be, to do auditions. And I remember Will I Am turning around and it was, just, it was just a, an amazing feeling. I was so nervous walking out onto that stage. I remember how nervous I was um, and just having the nerves throughout. And the nerves never go away. Uh, you just learn how to control the nerves. Uh, I uh, then went on to the battles uh, which was which was a, an, again another trial and turbulent and turbulent time for me, but you know these things and that, this journey it uh, uh, equips you with the tools that you need to get over obstacles and overcome barriers later on in life. So the obstacles and the barriers that you are encountering right now, robbery, Robbie, these will help you to take on some of the harsher barriers that you will face later on in life okay it sounds like you've got a lot of work and you will soon be successful thank you very much well and 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 this is the great thing about it that we need to and likewise to you you will be successful as well and it's through the hard work um, and it's through dismantling those barriers that tend to hold us young black boys back um, and it's very important that we, we understand how the world works, but we understand that we can achieve greatness if we put our mind to it and if we can overcome by working together. Okay. Have you got the song coming out soon? Well, I was recording at the beginning of this year, um, but because of coronavirus, I had to stop. Um, so I'm waiting for things just to ease down so I can go back into the studio and record. So... Maybe it might be a Christmas album later on this year. Who knows? 
but I'm looking forward to getting mm-hmm. back into the studio, getting back to writing and getting back to recording. I would also love to hear that song when it does come out. Thank you. Maybe. You want to hear me sing right now? Well, if you want, if you feel comfortable in doing it. Yeah, what song should we sing? It's, it's early in the morning though, so um, my voice might be a bit tired. Um, why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? And long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is all. And I know he watches me. I feel like I just actually listened to you singing in the voice. (laughs) You're doing the best you could, and that sounded so good. I literally love the sound of your voice. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. (laughs) You have a really special gift. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. This is a, it was the morning voice, so it, it's a bit rusty and I haven't warmed up yet. But thank you very much. Thank you so much, JJ, for your time and support to highlight the BLM cause. It is an on, honour, not honour, and a privilege to meet you. And likewise. Stay safe and stay happy. Keep up the good work. Thank you for being here today with us and me. Thank you so much for having me. I've had a wonderful time speaking with you. And I would like to ask, is it okay to ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. So what's next for you? Um, I've seen that you're, you're doing a lot of interviews with people um, and a lot of celebrities, which is, which is amazing. But what is next for you? Well, actually, I'm surprised that you said that because I don't really know what's next for me. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess that's the great thing about it. That it's, not to and and i i was like you at your age i didn't really know what was next for me i just had a number of passions i love doing a number of things and i put all my energy into those things right i remember being in school and i loved acting alongside singing and playing instruments i love science and and creative things and i love food technology because I, i love cooking and i just put my all into all of those things and i think that at someone of your age, how old are you now? Because I believe it was your birthday this week. I am 10, actually. Just no, well, not today, but two days ago. Two days ago. Well, happy belated birthday. Uh, and at 10 years old, I just loved doing everything. I loved exploring and I loved learning. And I think that's the most important thing. I think that you need to just explore. Explore what you love to do. Uh, and explore what, what makes you happy. And through that exploration, you will find out the great things that you love to do and the things that you're great at doing. Um, But also you'll find out what your passion is and your purpose is. And I think that's one of the most important things that um, we can really discover in life, what our passion and what our purpose is. Uh, So keep up the great, great work that you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on you. Okay. Well, what I've got left to say now is bye-bye and thanks for this wonderful time and thanks for spending all of your precious time with me. Thank you so much for having me. God bless. God bless you too.